So first of all, thank you for coming. And um, I um, uh, wanted to share uh, this news, obviously, with the community. Uh, it's been a very difficult decision. Um, but uh, after more than 13 years of serving the community as the provincial MPP, I am uh, uh, indicating today that I am stepping down from cabinet, uh, effective today, and resigning as MPP uh, for the riding of Sault Ste. Marie as of December 31st, uh, at the end of this calendar year. And the reason uh, for that is because of the people who are standing next to me and my time away from home has uh, continued to grow in the demands of the work. And I have missed many events in my children's lives uh, and I need to be in Sault Ste. Marie. And I'm excited about being back in Sault Ste. Marie to be able to spend more time with my family. Uh, I'm very, very proud of the work that we've accomplished together over more than 13 years. And I want to thank the residents of Sault Ste. Marie uh, from the bottom of my heart for the uh, four elections and more than 13 years that they supported me uh, through. And it has been a tremendous honor and a privilege uh, to serve a community that I am so passionate about, uh, that has such hardworking, uh, committed individuals in our community, um, and has so much potential. I love this community, uh, and it's a great community, uh, and I have been, again, very fortunate to be able to have the privilege and honor to, to serve the residents of Sault Ste. Marie, my fellow citizens, to be their voice at Queen's Park uh, over the last uh, 13 years uh, or thereabouts. So I want to thank all of you as well. It's been a pleasure to work with all of you um, over many years and through years at council as well. But um, it's, it's important that I'm here while uh, we are still raising our children and, and I want to be able to be here to spend more time with, uh, with my family. So um, that is uh, the news that I'm sharing with you today. And, um, I don't know if you have any questions, but uh, I don't know if there's much more that I can say. Um, you know, it has been an incredible learning experience, and I have been fortunate to work with so many very good people. You know, I want to thank the Premier for giving me the opportunity to serve in Cabinet, thank the former Premier uh, for the work that has been done in our community, all of my colleagues as well uh, for um, supporting the community's priorities, and I also want to say that the individuals that work here in this constituency office have been a re very real part of uh, our successes in the community over uh, many years. Uh, Carmen Biasucci, uh, Beverly Fiaconi, Lillian Vagnini, and Cindy uh, Crawford, uh, and of course staff in the ministry that I've worked in as well. But these individuals here in the community uh, at this constituency office have been integral to um, the work that we've done and uh, they do the heavy lifting in this office that helps support uh, all of the concerns that residents uh, bring to us, many of the concerns that residents uh, bring to us over, uh, uh, over the many years and, and the many issues that we've, uh, we've, we've worked on. Um, I've been fortunate to work with many individuals in our community in various leadership positions and uh, all of them you know, get up every morning in this community and try to make their organization in this community a better place and I've been very fortunate to, uh, to get to know them well and to, uh, and to work to support their agendas and their um, priorities in the organizations that they represent in our community. So um, it's been, it has been uh, an exceptional experience and I owe a huge debt of gratitude to the residents of Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, for putting their faith in me uh, for the last four elections. Why now and why not at the end of your term, David? The, uh, the timing is for, for us, for my family uh, now. Um, um, the, again, I, you know, I've continued to, uh, I've continued to make sacrifices uh, that has uh, put my family second in, in many instances and you know when I started in this job uh, Alexander wasn't around and Olivia was three years old and in a couple more years
Olivia will be going to a post-secondary institution. I'm not sure which, um, but uh, I want to spend as much time with my family as I can and, and um, recognize that the time to do that is, is now. When did so. you start thinking about this? this uh, it wasn't back uh, that last election, so was it this year? Or? Well, uh, it's, you know, this has been, this has been a challenge uh, uh, from from day one, I mean, uh, it's it's something that's part of the job, and you um, you uh, accept the realities of being away uh, out of the community for approximately 24 weeks of the year, or or more. 12 weeks in the fall session, 12 weeks in the spring session, plus additional responsibilities uh, uh, if you have those, uh, and additional travel. Um, and so it's something that has always, and, and it, you know, from the time that I, uh, we uh, and the family made a decision to run and to do this, um, that's been something that was always part of the equation, that uh, there's going to be a sacrifice uh, that we're going to make uh, personally with our family and time together uh, to do this kind of work. And uh, at the time, in 2003, it was um, the right time for for uh, us to make that decision. We made that decision together and we're making this decision together. Um, so you can say that it's something that, you know, I've, I've thought about uh, all along the time that I've been uh, doing this work, but I would say that in more recent years, um, you know, those sacrifices are a little bit greater and the challenges are a little bit greater. And so, um, you know, it's, it's important for me to spend the time with our, uh, with our family uh, and with our children, because that's time that uh, is, is uh, it's time you're not going to get back, right? So family first, David. But uh, of course, but uh, you have any other uh, professional plans moving forward? Anything in mind? I, you know, um, today's uh, for us is about talking to the community uh, and thanking the community for uh, the tremendous opportunity that uh, that the community has has given me. Um, that's something that I'll talk about with my family, uh, you know, over the holidays, and um, you know, we'll be able to perhaps uh, share some of that uh, with you or the conclusions uh, that we come to um, in the new year. It's been a, a very long, eventful time for you, long time, thirteen years, and uh, a lot has happened, and a lot of change, and uh, a lot of accomplishments. Can you, can you possibly nail down one? Accomplishment that you're really particularly proud of? You know, there are some, when I think back to um, the rationale that, that I went through uh, as a city councillor years ago, thinking about the importance of what the province could do for our community and what kinds of investments we needed in our community and resources we needed to bring to our community, um, there are a number that come to mind. Um, Obviously, uh, we had two older hospitals on the waterfront. Um, we didn't have the radio, uh, radiation therapy here locally. Um, you know, the investment that the province has made in uh, healthcare in Sault Ste. Marie has been significant family health team investments, nurse practitioner, one of the first three nurse practitioner clinics uh, in Ontario, the new hospital, uh, the northern medical schools that have helped to reduce the physician shortage in northern Ontario. Uh, so there was some significant uh, healthcare investments, uh, long-term care, care capacity, and so on. Um, in the education sector, there's been some some very significant changes. Uh, you think of the new, uh, it's still the newest university in Ontario, Algoma University, it's independent status, uh, something that's been very positive uh, for the community, and there's considerable potential there. Um, you look at the K-12 education, both the Algoma District School Board and the Huron Superior Catholic Board, New, new schools, uh, many new schools, uh, you know, over $150 million in new investments in, in the education uh, system. Um, social services, we look at, uh, you know, I remember being elected and we talked about the, uh, the former youth uh, facility being closed, our young people being moved to Sudbury, there were uh, the OPP forensic lab. There's, there's a number of, I think, initiatives that, many initiatives that, that we've invested in as a government um, and I was able to do that with the uh, work and support of people in the community 
who led the various organizations and the input from the people that worked in those organizations that gave me the information that I needed to be able to make uh, a solid case to the province or the respective minister uh, for those investments in, in, in Sault Ste. Marie. And so, uh, you know, in the public services and across many, many ministries, um, you know, we've made, we've made very, very significant investments. I think of uh, the MNR resources and the flight simulator uh, investment here for the heavy water bomber uh, training. That's uh, the only place in the province that that can be done is here in, in Sault Ste. Marie. And so I know that the province is poised as well to make further investments in a number of areas. And you think of one of the key economic development tools that we've had in Northern Ontario has been the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund Corporation through the Ministry of Northern Development and Mines. When I started in government, uh, that fund stood at $60 million. That, despite you know the recession and the downturn, um, when there has been some contraction in, in, in how we fund various organizations, you know, we've hung on and been able to grow that program to $100 million. So uh, it's an incredibly important resource for businesses and for investment in Sault Ste. Marie. And in fact, it's delivered over $100 million in funding to various projects, to over 600 projects uh, in this community since 2003. So, you know, to put your finger on one specific thing, I, again, you know, I've had the privilege to work with so many great people in our community on many, many initiatives, and uh, I know there are many more good things in the uh, on the horizon for our community because this community has so much potential. On the flip side of the coin, you think quite the right. <laughs> um, if you could nail down one most biggest biggest challenge that you faced, uh, and then be, being a, as a minister of a government that's come under fire from a lot of things, for the past 13 that happens, right? Sure, I mean. You're going to be in, in government. And to, a lot of things are going to happen. Sure. Like come under a lot of fire. Biggest challenge you face? Well, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, this is different than the municipal level, where individuals vote and they vote how they would like to vote on any issue, as as long as they believe that they're uh, voting for what they feel is the right thing to do. Uh, in the political party environment, um, it's. Uh, there's more of a team sport to the process, uh, as you know. But overall, in terms of challenges, I would say, you know, as a Northern representative, as a Northern MPP, and looking at the 107 ridings with redistribution coming and more ridings being added, primarily in the GTAHA, um, you know, the challenge, the ongoing challenge will be for uh, northern members uh, to uh, to see resources from the province flow into their communities. That is a that's that's a huge challenge. Just fo you know ensuring that we're doing all that we can and that we're well organized at a community level and well focused with a good strategic plan to um, help ensure that we maximize the opportunity to see provincial resources flow into uh, into the community. I mean that's. That's really, that has been my challenge for more than 13 years. It has been, um, you know, we have, we have a, uh, perhaps, a, you know, communities in Northern Ontario may not see, um, you know, I, I think we're all aware of the challenges of Queen's Park and the challenges of uh, resources coming to particular parts of the province. I mean, that, that hasn't changed in many years. Um, we may have certain expectations about what should happen uh, and how responsive provincial government should be. Um, the reality of that is it's a, it's a, um, it's a tougher challenge than, than, than many people perhaps uh, anticipate in terms of getting those resources into Northern Ontario to support prior, the priorities of Northerners. And that's also why it's very, very important that, that Northern residents in Ontario or that our community, for that matter, in, uh, where there are uh, like challenges, speak with one voice to, you know, maximize the uh, uh, the strength of what is being said and the importance of uh, particular investments being made in, you know, in a whole multitude of sectors. And I know that individuals that I work with, obviously my colleagues in Northern Ontario, we talk about issues in 
in Timmins, in North Bay, in Sudbury, in Sault Ste. Marie, in Thunder Bay, uh, and across the North. And we share many similarities in terms of the challenges that we face. And the organizations and the leadership of those organizations in all of those communities share similar challenges. So, um, you know, there are opportunities to work together to try to uh, bring more resources to our community. And that's something that, um, um, you know, has faced individuals uh, who have uh, represented our community provincially in the past, and it will continue to face individuals who will represent our community uh, in the future and at all levels, whether it's the mayor and council uh, or it's the provincial MPP or the federal MP. Um, and it's something that we need to look at and, uh, and be focused and be strategic about to, to maximize the, uh, the benefits for the community because, again, this community has tremendous potential. I feel very fortunate to be a resident of this community, to have been born here and grown up here uh, and have my family here, an extended family here. Um, it's, it's a great community, it's a, and it's a community I love. Well, how about the seat? What are your expectations for the seat? Will it stay vacant until 2018? Will there be a by-election? By so be... there's a requirement that uh, within six months there needs to be a by-election called, so uh, there will be a by-election called uh, for this for this riding, and um, I will not presuppose what the residents of Sault Ste. Marie will do. That is uh, a choice that's, that's up to them, and again, I feel very fortunate and uh, thankful uh, that I've had the opportunity to serve our community. What was the Premier's reaction when you discussed this or told her? Uh, you know, I think she was, uh, she was very understanding, uh, and I think she certainly acknowledges that uh, for many members of our caucus, depending on where their riding is and their personal circumstances, uh, it is more difficult for some than others, depending on uh, those challenges. And I, you know, um, thanked her for the opportunity uh, to serve in cabinet and in uh, a number of ministries and three different ministries. Uh, I think she was, um, you know, disappointed that I was leaving. Um, we have. Um, uh, and I have relied on her support for initiatives uh, in the community to materialize. And so I, I value that support um, uh, from my colleagues as well as from the former Premier. Um, but she, I think, was accepting of the fact that uh, this has been uh, challenging uh, work to do uh, and uh, challenging with a young family that is uh, you know, 400 miles from Queen's Park or so. This last ministry you had is a particularly taxing right. uh, ministry. Did that help make that, your decision easier? Uh, no, I, I'm going to say that um, this ministry uh, that I'm in currently or have been in um, for the past six months or so since June, since the last mm -hmm. uh, shuffle, um, it's maybe made the decision more difficult. I, I am working with um, or no less difficult in the sense of in each of the ministries, uh, the deputy minister, the staff, the staff that I have worked with have been uh, remarkable. Uh, they worked very hard to support me and we have collectively tried to move uh, um, you know, issues forward that need to be resolved. Um, this ministry is a different ministry. Each of them have their own unique challenges. The Ministry of Natural Resources, the Ministry of Government Services and Consumer Services, and of course, uh, Community Safety and Correctional Services. They're all very different ministries with unique challenges. Um, and, and I wouldn't say that this made the decision harder or easier. The decision has been made because of my family, regardless of the ministry role that I have been in. Um, the work that is required in this ministry, um, it, like many, is significant and, in, and demanding. And I think we have been in this ministry, if I can speak about that for just a moment, turning the corner on many of those issues. We have Howard Sapers coming into the ministry to do the review on corrections. Uh, I made a, a very significant announcement yesterday in Toronto at Queen's Park from the work that has been done over the last number of months with Minister Hoskins around a new investment to over 200 new staff coming into the ministry, uh, really focusing on some of the mental health challenges in the correctional division of our ministry. But uh, I, you know, was, I have been feeling much more optimistic about the, about the um, longer term in the ministry that I've been serving 
because of the progress that we've made over the last six months. There have been some very challenging issues that have been reported on, as you're aware. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, I believe that we were, um, we've been making some very good progress on them.